Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's your boy Logan JYA, and I come to you not as the dry Kage, but once again an anti-meta fiend. And what I've got for you cooking up right now is what could very well be a very serious anti-meta contender for the current format. That's right, folks. Necro Goon makes its triumphant return in a format where we have a deck that exclusively only plays monster cards. I feel like it's begging for us to break out the Royal Tribute. So without further ado, I'm going to show you guys my current list. We're going to be doing a DB style because unfortunately wasn't able to get my hands on all of the cards to show it to you with the real ones just yet but don't worry we're gonna be playing at locals on the live stream link in the description down below and we've got replays at the end of this video you definitely want to see the last one where we really have the most juiciest of gameplay so without further ado let's get into it all right, beautiful people, what do we have in front of us? We got a monstrosity, that being the Necro Goons for 2023. Now, a lot of things may look similar to our older iterations. That's because they still work, but there are some keynote changes in here that I'm going to point out. Now, make sure you stick around. I got to make sure I explain everything to you properly as we go through it, but I'm going to go through the basics real quick. Of course, we got triple copies of the Gravekeeper's Command and grab your Necro Valley. Our Red Eyes Wyvern, which pairs nicely with our beautiful Red Eyes Insight. We got our Black Dragon, as well as our Dark Magician. Again, if this video smashes 100 likes, not only going to do IRL content with this deck, but I will also show you guys the real deck profile and more gameplay if you enjoy it. So, we've got our package. We've got our triple copies of Necro Valley. Oh, I, I wish I had the alties in front of me right now, but it's okay. We'll settle with them looking good on the screen. Triple copies of Throne that grabs you Command in. That's pretty much all it's searching in here. One thing I want to flag here is sometimes... You want to hold the throne. Sometimes you want to hold the commandant because sometimes you're going to normal summon him and use him to beat down your opponent. 2100 beater when Necro Valley's on field ain't no joke. And it is very relevant when your opponent is locked under the Necro Valley and can't play their deck properly. You put in a simplified game state, Sometimes a 2100 beater is all you need to win. Let's move on. We got triple copies of Pot of Prosperity. This is arguably one of the best cards in the deck. It is some ways your extra copy of fusion your extra copy of insight your extra copy of royal tribute or your extra copy of necro valley or your extra copy of that one nice beautiful trap that you're trying to grab that's just how strong this card is digging six cards deep it's understandable why this card is hit in master duel and it very well very may well be hitting the tcg someday as well let's move on we got triple copies of royal tribute oh yeah that's what makes this deck tick baby that's what makes this engine worth running it's not just necro valley it's not it's not a solo party here we got this beauty right here let's read it together okay necro if you control necro valley both players discard any monsters they have in their hands how many monsters are we playing with six total okay that's not a lot but what deck what deck in the format is playing only monster cards huh Huh, that sounds like Super Heavy Samurai. So you know what that feels like to me? It feels like if we win the die roll and we're lucky enough to open Royal Tribute in one of our over 12 ways of getting to Necro Valley, then we kind of just win the, the game. We win game one at least, and then we should go on theoretically to win the match because our engines are strong enough to beat the deck. Moving on, we've got the one copy of Terraforming, triple copies of Fusion, triple copies of Insight. You gotta max this out, guys. I know we're only playing one package. You never want to play more than one package, but you need to see this card as fast as possible. Any supplemental copies you see in your hand become fuel for the Dragoon. Triple copies of Dark Ruler No More, triple copies of Droplets. You might be thinking, okay, well, Arise Heart's still in this format. Why the heck are you playing Droplets? Let me tell you this. There's a lot of board states where you're going to be going second, and that Droplets is going to enable you to OTK your opponent. Also, it gives us a fighting chance. You got six cards that give us a fighting chance against going second into the super heavy board. And sometimes this is just enough to win you the game on its own. What is it not good against? Of course, it's not good against a Rise Heart. What is it not good against? It's also not that good against the puppet lock the Brandeds are doing. And those are some matchups that you're going to struggle with inherently. But against Pearly, against Super Heavy, against Mana Dome, we're in a pretty good situation with this deck. Just want to make sure you guys are aware of that. Triple copies of Solemn Strike, triple copies of Torrential. These are my favorite trap cards to play in this deck. They haven't changed since turn one when we first built this strategy. And that's because they're just so darn powerful. The Torrential goes together with Dragoon like peanut butter and jelly. Cannot be destroyed by card effects. There's so many decks that are spamming out the board right now. A well-timed Torrential can mean the difference between life and death for you. And Solemn Strike is still just Solemn Strike. So strong. We got triple copies of the goes in match, objectively speaking, the best floodgate of the format right now. If you don't believe me, just look at the attributes. Super heavy, sure, a lot of them are earth, and if they play things correctly, they may be able to Saratobi pop this goes in. 
It's going to be hard to do when they're under Necro Valley. And it's going to be really hard to do if we lock them under a suboptimal monster. Let's look at Pearly, bro. They got a few different attributes in there. Let's look at Math Mech, bro. They got a lot of different attributes in there. Gozen is just the right way to go. So definitely an ideal floodgate for the current format. I'm maxing it out. I recommend you do the same. Side deck, triple copies of Cosmic for the back row matchups and the Runics. Triple copies of Solemn Judgment. Basically, whenever we're going first, one of these two is coming out and Triple Judgment is coming in. That's a given. Triple copies of Fenrir. Okay, guys, there are certain matchups where the Fenrir is decent to bring in. It's also another way to apply pressure. I think I talked about this when I used to main deck Fenrir in my previous build of Necro Goon. However, I wanted to let you know right now, I stuck it into the side deck just for those situations where the opponent appears to be ready to deal with the Dragoon. Say they're playing outs for the Pearly matchup anyway, and they sack over the Dragoon with something like a Kaiju, and we're not able to have the Goza match to save us another cool interaction you might want to be aware of that means they have to have raiden that's the only kaiju that will out it santa claus ain't gonna do it gamma seal ain't gonna do it so if you flip up goes and match in their standby phase you're also protecting yourself from kaijus keep that stuff in mind fenrir is another way to apply pressure if they out the dragoon this is our secondary wooden condition keep that in mind and then, yes, we are siding some of the most high impact hand traps of the current format and in the history of this game triple copies of droll I don't think I need to explain this. We're in a format where Droll is obscenely good. And then we got Triple Copies of Ghost Reaper. The only reason why I'm doing this is because we have so much free leeway in the extra. I want to give a shout out to my boy Rob. Not only did he help put together the first iteration of this deck way back in the day, but he did recommend this. And I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's side this card. Have I pulled it off yet? Not in a point where it's been very impactful, but we're going to do it, baby. We're going to do it. Let's get in this extra deck real quick. We got two copies of Dragoon. You need to play two because Cash Terror exists. One Cerberus and one Phoenix. It's theoretically possible to summon them. Same thing goes for our double Zeus package. Baguska, Exciton, and Gaga Ga Cowboy. If you guys saw the last Necrogoon deck profile, you know they were able to wipe out the opponent with Gaga Ga Cowboy for game. That was pretty funny. And then we just got our Cherries targets. If you have a recommendation for a Cherries target that you think we should be playing, let me know in the comments down below because I'm sure I've missed some. I've been thinking about maybe playing something for the Math Max. I'm not sure which one to go with yet. Let me know in the comments. We've got our friend Arise Heart. We've got Gigantic Sprite. We've got the Noir. We've got Branded Albion. This is the one we thought made the most sense for Branded. I could be wrong here. You guys let me know what you think. I thought this one might be the most high impact target to hit. It sucks not having Ash in rotation in this deck. If you wanted to maybe, like, you know, wanted to go really hard hand trap side in, you could make it nine cards and cut the cash to your offenders and do extra hand traps. Then, of course, you got the Scarecrow. We know what all that's for. And then Achuria Beast was the scariest card that the Runic deck could put up. We, there's no really, it's not correct to hit Hugin. It's not correct. So having the Nat Beast for the Nachuria Runic deck, it made the most sense as the Cherry's target. But that's it for the profile, guys. We're not done yet. I'm going to show you guys some replays to close us out. Don't forget to smash that like button. Let's get into it, baby. All right, beautiful people. Let's dive in with replay number one. We're off against the super heavy samurais. And you look at this, man. We opened the god combo. We had access to Necro Valley plus Royal Tribute in that matchup. This was the replay I was searching for, hitting a super heavy player for five. Unfortunately, though, the man was so afraid of the Royal Tribute that he ashed the commandant, which objectively speaking was correct, and he saved himself from that dastardly fate. Now he's going to continue to play on. He's playing the Fenrir. We've seen this seeing a lot more popularity in the deck. And here I end up, I think I redeemed this Torrential way too early. If I'm being honest, I think I redeemed it a little too early, but I was scared. However, I was correct in the fact that he was only able to then summon Fenrir again and pass it back. However, I drew into the third copy of Royal Tribute. What the heck was that? We weren't able to do nothing. That's okay. We're going to hit him even harder in the next game. Fortunately enough, he doesn't open any hand traps game two, so we're going first here. Rock things off. We are going to get the full setup minus the Royal Tribute. That's right. We got our friend Red Eyes Dark Dragoon locked and loaded with the beautiful Necro Valley. So I end up redeeming the Commandant, getting the Necro Valley. We do already have the throne, so we have access to additional pressure if we need it. Dragoon goes up. I actually redeem it here a little early. It probably made sense to hold it a little longer. And this is the name of the game. It's the waiting game, guys. When you only have Dragoon 
and your back rows. You want to be sure to hold them as long as possible. Here I misplay, I negate and allow him to banish the Necro Valley with the Fenrir. Definite mistake. Might have wanted to redeem the Torrential a little bit earlier. But however, this Torrential is still going to be super juicy later on in the turn. Hitting him with it and then locking and loading all of these cards. He's only able to search the follow-up, which means I'm able to go in for a nice juicy 4k swing. Pass turn, and we're again just going to hold things as long as possible. Here, it made sense. We're going to Solemn Judgment, the normal summon of the Soul Piercer, so it doesn't get that search. That way, he's not able to go into his engine. He doesn't have the extension. It's just Fenrir, and Fenrir doesn't do anything against the beautiful Dragoon. So that's going to be game two in the books for us. Game three. Oh, baby, game three. Let me tell you what happens here. Our opponent is starting things off, and look at what we got. This is why we side those beautiful hand traps. I brought in Triple Droll and Triple Reaper for this situation. Now, even though he didn't have it here, I held the Droll in case of the Gamma. I think this is pretty common known practice at this point. So it goes Baguska Pass. Baguska does next to nothing against this deck. Sure, we can Dragoon the turn we summon it. Who cares, Yugi? We're going to be backing it up with Floodgates. And then they have to choose to... Or am I going to just keep sitting on this until he can out it? I don't know. So you got to think about it like that, guys. We're being strategic here in playing into a Baguska. It doesn't matter that much. We use Command and grab the Necro Valley. Fusion resolves. I was kind of holding my breath on that one. I was afraid we might have that unlucky Ash. He rips the Droll off the top a little too late there, Chief. And this stealthy card was definitely a threat. So the opponent is a Dingus and Biffs. And he tries to argue with me and saying, uh, it's preventative. I couldn't have used the Scarecrow. No, that's not true, bro. Let's read Necro Valley together. Negate any card effect. I'll move a card in the graveyard to a different place. Therefore, he attempted to activate and it resolves negated beautiful stuff beautiful stuff and then he goes for the stealthy summon to attempt to out the necker valley you know what we say to that torrential tribute baby big torrential that's gonna be knocking out all these cards on his field and then he's got no plays left to rock and roll with sealing the game for the mighty necro goon let's get into another replay all right, here we go into our next game. We are facing off against the Pearlies. Now, mind you guys, I don't know how great this guy was in terms of Pearly play style. I'm not necessarily sure yet how the deck works entirely myself. All I know is that Necro Valley is also pretty filthy here. Mind you, he's going for the memory. I think he probably biffed his combo here. There had to be a way to put up more. Regardless, he puts up the negate guy. And we're just kind of going to try and play into it to the best of the ability. Resolving the Pot of Prosperity. Grab myself a copy of the beautiful Necro Valley. And we got our Red Eyes Insight. He drolls on Res. Ugh, that means we're not going to be able to get off our Dragoon. All good. All good. All is well that ends well. Let's let him continue to keep on playing. He gets his free search. He's only going for 16. I don't know why he doesn't choose to commit more. He attempts to remove the Necro Valley. That's the easiest strike of my life. So he decides to try and play in main phase 2. And now he's going to go for his excavate, get that free add, and kind of just keep on going here. Summon more. And this is where we're just long holding our traps for the right optimal moment is going to be the best thing. So I hit him with the torrential here. I was a little slow to it, but we were going to do it no matter what. Insight. Grab fusion. Go for it, baby. He don't got the ash. We are cooking. Go for the Dragoon, hit him for 3k, pass turn, and he's got this little card. Listen, we're definitely not going to negate this. There are better things to negate, especially when we want to defend the castle, the castle being our Necro Valley. So he goes for the Pearly. Let's just knock that out here. We already knew his hand was suboptimal by how he was choosing to play out that game. And, of course, we get the boosted Dragoon. We lock and load the game in our favor. So he goes for Dimensional Shifter, hits us with that, and also has the Ash for the Fusion. Oof, that sucks for us. However, he's not able to play either, apparently. That, that ends up working out for me pretty good. So we end up going for the Pot of Prosperity here. Grabbing ourselves another copy of Insights. The only way we have to Dragoon that we're able to reveal off of that one. It sucks because we have the Wyvern in hand, but we still want to get it. So we go for the Insight. Or no, we do not. We go for the Command and Attack. Oh, that's right because we were still under that other Floodgate. Totally makes sense. We got Drolled again. Go figure. Hit him for the 21. Flip up the Gozen match. Oh my gosh, guys. Gozen is so strong in this match, if you gotta believe me. And this is what I mean when I say that Gozen is just one of those most powerful floodgates that you can play right now in any stun or anti-meta strategy. You're playing Eldritch, you're gonna wanna have Gozen in there. Anyway, we end up rocking and rolling with that one, and we got it covered. So that's another win in the books for the mighty Necro Goon. Let's round things out with one of the juiciest replays we have. All right, here we go, guys. Final replay of the video. This one is a banger. Look at this opening hand. We got some serious duplication here. And oh, speaking of duplication, look what we're playing. It's playing against the math, the nasty old math. But guess what, guys? 
You know what's a really good card against Math Mech? That'd be our friend Necro Valley. And since he did end up opening with the Droll, he waited for us to establish a monster to play around Gamma. Fair enough, like we did in our earlier replay. I go for the Negate here, and he has the second Droll. So I'm like, all right, fair enough. You want to use two cards in your hand? That's fine by me. And Necro Valley still kind of lock and loads the game in this matchup, so I'm feeling pretty good. And he does not have anything to cook with here. Game one, it's it's a wash, guys. It's a wash. Once we have the Necro Valley up, and we're just accumulating floodgate after floodgate, and he's just bricking and bricking and bricking, we got it covered. And as a dry charm player, I know what it feels like to brick, so it's all good. Moving we'll on to the next game, he opens up a heavy monster hand, but since I have no interruptions, that's pretty good for him. Let's see what he's able to put up. And I'll I'll be honest, it's a pretty imposing field. He's going to do the traditional plays of the Alan Bershion, especially some of that subtraction. He's going to rip a card out of my hand on turn zero. Not a bad strat. Hits the Dark Ruler is what it is. Not the biggest of deals since he's going for Heat Soul with this line. And that's just going to keep getting him draw after draw. Oh, what did he draw? That nasty Ash Blossom. Oh, so filthy. I go for the Necro Valley. He immediately flips up the Super Factorial to remove it. A smart strategy. And oh my gosh, he hits my Solemn Strike. Therefore, I'm just going to have to set cards and pass. He's got the Soga King strategy of Cosmic Cycling the goes in, which would have been one of the most powerful floodgates we could have had on him going into his turn. And unfortunately, it's going to be all she wrote for Game 2. But Game 3, guys, it happens. Oh, baby, does it happen. We finally get to do it. The Turn Zero Royal Tribute. Even though it's not against Super Heavy in this replay... Look at how many cards we're hitting out of his hand. Oh, it's so beautiful. Four cards ripped with the Royal Tribute. Yes. Yes. So, again, we're kind of just waiting to see that one magical card. And we do eventually rip the Red Eyes Fusion in a simplified game state, which means we're winning. But, uh-oh. He had the Dimensional Barrier. Well, it's a good thing we sided in that Solemn Judgment to just say no and establish our super powerful boss monster. Royal Tribute him again for good measures. Hit him for 3k. What does he rip off the top? Nothing that matters, baby. Normal summon commandant and go in for a game. Guys, I always love playing Necro Goon. I think it's one of the most silly and fun for me, not for the opponent, anti-meta strategies that you can play. If you're looking to turn your brain off, go into Raider and make some people really mad, lose some friends along the way, give Necro Goon a try. With that being said, Logan JYA signing off. Have a great day, and I'll see all you beautiful people later. Mm, peace. <laughs>